Hello, 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 everybody. Well, we're going to have a little bit of fun in the studio here today. We're going to do some exercises, some techniques, some methods on practicing on printer paper, some of your favorite techniques you want to brush up on. So we're going to try out a few things here. So what I did was I took a stack of um, printer paper and I put it next to me and I taped one sheet of uh, printer paper down on my um, work table here, just like that. And we're going to work on some printer paper. We don't want to use our uh, expensive watercolor paper for practice when we're maybe practicing some of our techniques that we want to really um, perfect. We could do lots of practice on uh, printer paper. You can buy uh, heavyweight printer paper, which is also ex inexpensive. This is just normal office paper, but you can buy a little, they have different weights, so you can buy a little bit of a thicker, heavier weight printer paper um, to practice on. Might be a little more, um, might handle a little bit better with watercolor. But for this um, video, we're just going to use standard printer paper you would find in the office or at home when you use uh, for your printers. And then what I'll do is I'll I'll have my uh, water bucket here, so as we're working along here, I'll just take my water bucket and I'll just uh, use my fan brush here. I have an old fan brush. I used to do a little, a little bit of uh, oil painting with my fan brush here. So I do mostly watercolor painting now. So I'm going to use that just to uh, kind of scrub around on my water, my collapsible water bucket here plastic water bucket. That's all. I'll get some fresh water. I'll put some fresh water in here. I use a juice container, orange juice container, to uh, keep my water next to me here in the studio and then I just fill up my water container. So what we're going to do here is just basically cover the idea of um, practicing our um, techniques in watercolor separate from when we're doing our paintings. Because when you're doing your paintings, let's say, you're going to want to be familiar with the te techniques you're using. And that's really the key. If you can already have, um, have a good feel for your techniques in the way you use your handle, your brush, your paints, your water, um, before you're painting and doing a, creating a painting, you'll be better off. So if you practice those separately, your techniques, some of your techniques you might want to use, we're going to start out with actually a splashing technique. If you practice those first on a piece of scrap paper, so you're not going to waste your good watercolor paper, you'll get a good feel for those uh, techniques, let's say. So we're going to practice some splashing now. The first thing we'll notice is with splashing, um, you can break it down into uh, a little bit of, we're going to use some blue, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. We're going to use some uh, Prussian blue, some burnt umber and we're going to make a dark. Now you can see this is very little water, mostly just paint. That's, that'll be our first um, well of our palette, our paint box. Then we're going to make the same mixture of colors, but just make it a little bit lighter. So we'll take a little bit of that color and we'll just move it over here. And we'll just add a little more water to it. We're going to make a little more water to that mixture. So here, less water. Here, a little more water. And then over here. And we'll go back in. Get a little more paint. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber. 
Prussian blue. And then we're going to add lots of water. So we're going to find that We're going to have three, three wells, same colors for the most part. And we're going to see how each of these handle. And besides these four, we're going to do one more. We're going to use a little bit of paper towel. So we'll do is we'll take this paper towel, we'll, dry, we'll rinse our brush, dry off our brush with the paper towel so that our brush is really dry. And then we'll go in and we'll use the same colors again. But we're going to make this really, really no water at all, just paint for the most part. Maybe a touch, a little bit of water, but not much. Prussian blue, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, like that. So now here we have four different... We have four different um, amounts of water and paint ratios. We have no water practically, just basically straight paint with maybe just a little touch of water. Maybe I'll put a little bit of water in there like that. Then you have a little bit of water added to the mixture. Then you have an average amount of water in that mixture like here. And then here you have a lot of water. And we'll even add a little bit of a little bit more water there so you can see there's lots of water in there so you have three four four different amounts of paint and water ratios there so it's basically all the same colors in each area just more water or less water in each one so here's the least amount of water and then here is the the most amount of water and then in between and that's going to affect your splashing so as we practice the splashing technique here. Let's let's see how it works. So I take my paintbrush. It's a round watercolor brush. This is a uh, Da Vinci Maestro brush, watercolor brush, natural hairs. This is Klinsky Sable hairs. So we're going to practice now and we're going to go, we're going to dry off the brush a little bit. Rinse the brush, clean water, dry off the brush just a little bit. And get some of this mix here, which is almost almost zero water, just a touch of water in there. And if we have to, we could take another brush like this and can you see that? Let me do a little more. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and That's almost no water and mostly stray paint. Can you see how fine that is? It's almost like a mist. So that's your lightest, your lightest amount of um, splashing and spattering. The very little, most minute, tiny little speckles with using almost zero water and mostly 99% paint maybe you know one or two percent water mixed in with your paint then uh, we'll rinse our brush off again we'll dry our brush off a little bit on the tissue then we're going to go into this paint well here now you can see it's getting a little different we're getting a, a different bit of look to our splashes we're getting Still quite a bit of very fine speckles, but a little more larger splashes of paint because we're kind of adding a little more water to it. Like that. So that's basically we could say we could take a, a, a Sharpie. You can make one of these papers as you go. So let's make this a maybe it, we're going to make this a, an exercise where we're going to create a composition here a practice composition but essentially we're going to use it and keep it in a folder in our studio here so i'll take this i'll i'll do this here on this video but then i'm going to take this and actually put it in a folder in my studio here just so i remember 
if I ever have to refer back to it, or if maybe somebody else, or maybe a student might ask me about splashing, I'll make a copy of this on the printer and hand it to, to someone and say, hey, this is, this is basically the formula for splashing. So this is like, let's say, one. Splashing technique one is, let's say, 90% paint, 10% water. Then maybe we'll draw a line through this here, like that. Make it fun. You have a little bit of fun with this, like that. Okay, then we did the second one. Maybe this is like uh, 80%. 80% paint, 20% water. So when you make that ratio of 80% paint, 20% water, that's the look you're going to get. A little more splashes, larger splash areas, still some fine speckles. So that's number two. Maybe we'll make a circle there and a circle around this one here. So this is a part of watercolor where you can do some practice exercises and then also make some notes on your paper as you're going. And uh, you'll see that it's a very profitable way to um, create some compositions and make some notes and you have it for your folder, you put it in your folder and you can always go back to this folder every once in a while. Okay, now we'll say here, let's use the next mix. There we go. Okay, that's maybe like 60% paint, 40% water. So let's make a little note. We'll take our Sharpie. Here we'll say 60% paint, 40% water. And then we could do, do a line like that. Okay, now we're going to go in this well here. Look at this. Lots, tons of water. Let's see how that works. There we go. So now I used our fourth well, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Let's put this over here as number three. And then number four over here. Okay, number four is, I would say, let's say 80. 80% Um, water, 20% paint, there we go. So now you can see the effects that you get. You can get those techniques with splashing. If you use mostly paint and very little water, you're going to get very fine, misty looking, um, very fine speckles of paint. That could be great for sand on a beach, some sand on some areas on some landscape paintings, um, and then overall just some fun, really fine speckles for maybe some textures on buildings, any type of uh, cityscapes, landscapes. 
uh, here we're getting with 80% paint, 20% water. Now you're getting into some splashing all around, just good, good ratio of splashing where you're getting some fine speckles, very fine speckles, and then some average amount of water splashes there. Here you're upping your game, you're adding a lot more water. You've got 40% water, 60% paint, approximately. More larger splashes, and you're not getting now, now you're not getting too much fine misty speckles. You're getting more just larger splashes with a lot of water. And then here, 80% water, 20% paint, you're getting a lot of large, juicy, watery splashes with almost zero fine speckles because you're using mostly all water and very little paint. So this is just a fun way you can set yourself up with a couple great compositions that you can make notes on your paper. Then we can take this and we can just, you know, we could put up at the top. Splash. Splashes. Technique. Then we can take a yellow highlighter and just highlight this. And this is going to go right into our folder in our studio here. However you have your studio set up, maybe you just have a place you paint at the kitchen table or your favorite chair and table you have at your house, whatever the case, keep a little manila folder and just create this, try this same exercise a few times, two or three times, and when you get it looking really good, then you can label it, just like I did here, maybe make four different, you know, segments of it. So you kind of get the feel of very little water, mostly just paint. Sometimes, you know, you have to use something like another, you have to use like another, like another brush because there's no water on the, hardly any water on the brush when you're doing this number one, 90% paint, you need like something to really get that paint off the brush. So that's why we use the, the other brush. Then as you get into a little more water, you really don't need anything. You can just tap that. You can use your finger too. Some people use their fingers to tap paint on. That's a great technique to use as well. Um, if you want to use that technique, you can use, you know, anything you have in the studio. But this is a great thing to sort of put into your folder and then you have that with you at your, uh, at your at your fingertips as you go when you're creating paintings and you say, oh, I, how, you, you ask yourself, oh, I got to do some splashing on this painting. How did I do it the last time, my last painting? Or, oh, I remember I did a, a tutorial on YouTube with Chris Petri and he showed me how to save an exercise like this, put it in a folder, and then you can just go right to your folder, pull this out, and you have it. And you can just remember, oh yeah, I used like 90% paint here on this one and I got really fine speckles. And then if I used mostly all water and just a touch of paint, I got these big, beautiful splashes over here on this side of the page. So that's a way you can do it. And we'll start another one. We'll do another technique, let's say. So this is the splashing technique. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna start something else. But before I do that, I'm gonna take a break um, in between here. So um, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna have a quick cup of coffee, sit down for a few minutes or so, maybe watch some YouTube videos, um, whatever. But uh, I'll be right back, yeah, just in a quick second or two. Um, but remember, please, uh, if you haven't subscribed, the subscribe button is right below here on the right-hand side, that little red button if you hit subscribe. And also if you hit the, uh, um, there's a small bell notification, notifications bell. If you hit all notifications, that means you'll see our new videos coming out each week you can click on, you know, it'll alert you right away on your YouTube uh, account or if you have just, if you're, your uh, cell phone, you'll be alerted that our new video comes out this week and watch along with us here, paint along with us, keep uh, keep working along with us week by week. You're going to get better with your watercolors. That's the main thing. Get excited. Your watercolors are going to be better if you're um, practicing a lot, uh, staying engaged in our channel here. We're covering every type of technique, methods, 
all different types, everything watercolor. And of course, here we're just doing some techniques uh, and some practice uh, style videos. But uh, we're going to do more of these style videos constantly, so get excited. Um, and again, we'll be right back. We're just going to take a break and then I'll come back and we'll maybe next we're going to do um, the um, needlepoint brush and we're going to have some ideas on how to use our needlepoint brush to get some beautiful techniques with splashing, with uh, using for trees, trunks of trees, branches, brush, grasses, all kinds of cool stuff. So, hey, stay tuned. Come back in just a second. We're going to come back in just a second uh, after I take a break. And I want you to take a break too. So take a break and then we'll all come back together and we'll keep working. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We're just getting back started up again here. We took a break. We're relaxed now. We can come back and we're going to start a next uh, composition. First, we're just going to review what we did on our first portion of this video, splashes technique. And again, we just went over how, as a watercolor artist, you can jot down some notes and do a quick couple compositions like this, put this in a folder in your studio, and then you can refer back to it. And then it's not like you have to reinvent the wheel and start scratching your head and saying, oh, how did I do splashes last time? Or uh, do I need to go find a video uh, that I, uh, on splashing or... Um, you don't have to worry about that. You could just go right to your folder. You keep it right next. You keep a manila folder with some of these um, printer paper and quick notes like this. You leave this in your studio or you, wherever you paint. You keep it in a folder right next to you and you have it. And then you can just refer back to it and say, oh yeah, I remember. If I use like 90% paint and just a tiny bit of water, I'm going to get these real fine splashing speckles like this. And if I use a lot, a ton of water and just a tiny bit of paint, I'm going to get these beautiful large splashes of paint and water. And then if I use 80% paint, 20% water, I just get a little bit of moderate size splashes. And then if I use 60% paint, 40% water, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this kind of, you know, some fine speckles and some larger splashes. So this is the fun part about watercolor. If you take some notes, you jot this down, you make a little chart like this for yourself, a little compositional uh, notes here, you'll be fine. You'll have this to refer back to, and then you don't have to reinvent the wheel or go out and research again, spending hours of time trying to find videos or, you know, you just keep this right in, right close to your where you work, at your art table, or if you just work, uh, you know, um, at your sofa and you have a little table next to your sofa that you work from, you might have a little folder next to you. Try to have a little spot you have in your place where you live, where you have a little bit of um, some places you can put some notes, your paints, so that you're just readily, you know, you can just readily jump in and start working with your watercolors. You don't want to have to go and start looking all around the house or your apartment to find your paints and your brushes and all your stuff. You want to have all your gear in one spot. I'll do a video on that in the very near future of how to keep your work station. Um, organized with your watercolors so that you're not really wasting time searching for stuff like your brushes might be in one spot, your paints might be in the basement or wherever. Save yourself all that trouble. We'll go over it. We'll do another video on organizing your art station, your art studio, the place you work, your workstation for your paints. No problem. We'll cover it. And again, I always say, please subscribe right down here on the right hand side. There's a little red button, subscribe button, hit that subscribe button. This way you're, you're with us every week. We're doing new videos every week here. This way you're always with us. You're doing all kinds of new techniques, methods, and um, processes in watercolor that are going to help you to get better. You'll stay more focused and you'll create better paintings. And that's what we want. We all want better paintings. So let's keep working toward that goal of better looking paintings and this way we'll be happier because we'll be creating happy paintings. All right, so let's start another sheet of paper here. So we have our splash technique page here. Okay, let's do another sheet here. So we'll do two in this video. So the second one we're going to do, we're going to switch over. We're going to use our needlepoint brush, needlepoint brush, and we're going to do, we're going to 
create some trees here quickly just a little so we take some burnt umber French ultramarine blue maybe a little sap green now we're going to add a little green into that sap green um, yellow ochre maybe a little cerulean blue we'll kind of get a nice mixture some uh, Prussian blue French ultramarine blue we'll kind of do a whole bit bunch of different colors and then we're going to do some tree trunks so with our needlepoint brush we can get those really fine lines so we're going to do the trunk of the tree here and we're going to go up like this and usually trees they're they get thinner as they go up top and they're thicker at the bottom so we'll, we'll thicken this out a little bit, we'll make it a little wider there we go then here we're to get this trunk in really neatly we're, we're holding the brush close to the ferrule so this is the ferrule of the brush, the metal ferrule now when we start to do the branches we're going to start to move our hand up higher on the brush and we're going to hold the brush up straight above like this and do the branches like this let me move this down a little bit like that there we go I just want to now since we are working on this let's take some pencil marks and just give us we'll give ourselves some very light guidelines of some branches on this tree So I'm just making some very light indication of lines so that we can use those to there we go so what I do is I basically I take my pencil and just make very very extremely light pencil marks at basically 45 degree angle about a 40 40 degree angle from the vertical um, trunk of the tree about 40 degree angle from the you know straight plum uh, trunk of the tree 40 about a 40 degree angle we start to make some very light pencil lines just so we can paint over the top of those in a, in a very loose fashion so we're not going to go exactly over the top of those very light sketches we're just using those as a guide to get our basic focus set so that we know where to go with our brush strokes does that make sense so once we have that all set we'll go in we'll get paint and we'll do that we'll choke up on the brush we're gonna take our brush hold it up high on the brush here so we're gonna hold our brush really high on the top of the handle and then go up like this and then we're just gonna kinda go in the general area of where we just had our pencil marks doesn't have to be on top of them just close to where they are that just gives us a guide to where to go like that can you see that also notice we filled our brush up one time in our palette with lots of paint and water and now we're just painting and painting and painting and we don't have to keep going back to our palette because this brush has tons of paint in this belly of the brush here and it keeps on filling the tip of the brush as we go so we don't have to worry we can just keep painting and that is what really is the beauty of this style brush this And you can just paint 
and paint. Look at this. All the whole, we've done this whole entire tree with just that one fill up of our brush. Look at that. This is a number 10, by the way, number 10 needlepoint brush, and this is Alvaro Castaneda's brushes. He has these on his website. You can get those at uh, alvarocastaneda.net. I buy these exclusively from his website. These last forever. I've had this one for like five years now, and uh, works great. Um, lasts the point, stays pointy forever. Great if you you know if you're looking to invest in some great quality products quality tools for your watercolor um, setup. This is a great tool, your needlepoint brush. Looks great too with that red color, looks beautiful. I, these are great brushes. And um, we're going to keep going here. Now you can take um, a round brush. You can you could probably use the needlepoint brush to do some splashing, but I'll transfer over to a um, I'm going to transfer over to a round uh, watercolor brush with some cadmium lemon yellow, a little bit of sap green, a little bit of viridian green, and we'll add some leaves and foliage to this tree we just did. Again, the splashing technique, we, we just covered that a second or two ago, and we're going to do it right here, like that. Okay, look at that. Leaves, more water, if you want to add more water, that'll be really good. Cadmium lemon yellow is all I'm really using with a little bit of sap green. Just like that. A little bit of finger painting too. You can use a little bit of tapping with your finger to get some, fill in some of the areas like that. Look at that, perfect. So there you have a perfect, beautiful, nice like spring looking tree, lots of bright green color there. You can add a little bit of darker blue maybe and green over here. Maybe make some shadow areas over here. So maybe on the left side of the tree there's more shadow. Like that. A little bit of shadowing over here on the ground. Okay, so we've covered two things. We've covered splashing in the first segment of this video, and now we just covered the really fantastic uh, needlepoint brush, doing our trees here, our limbs, our grasses. Let's do some grasses. Here you can take some yellow ochre. Maybe over here we're gonna use some yellow ochre. Maybe we're, so here look, just like this, some grass type things. Some splashing, some grass type feel. There we go. Have fun, splash around, create some grasses. Again, this is all about practicing on some printer paper to, to get a feel for your brushes, for your tools, for your brushes, your needlepoint brush, your round brushes, um, your palette, your water, paint to water ratios. Um, you know, you can practice along and say, all right, let me try some really, let's take some We'll keep our palette clean. Let's we'll clean up our palette a little bit. Here, so we're gonna just go through our palette just 
we're going to clean out all the paints we've been using. We've been mixing a lot. Just like that. Now we're going to try doing some really, uh, let's say, let's do some cerulean blue. Yellow ochre, cerulean blue. A little bit of Prussian blue. Okay, almost no water, just straight, almost straight paint with just a tiny bit of water. And then we uh, we remembered that we needed a little bit of help on this with the very, very little water and mostly all paint, 90% paint, just a tiny bit of water. We have to use maybe another brush or we can use our finger here and just see how that looks, see? And there we go. We splash on some paint. Like that. There we go. Then maybe we'll add some cadmium lemon yellow. And we'll add a little more water. We dip our brush into the paint bucket and get a little more water. And now we'll add some larger splashes. We can even make maybe like a couple bushes over here with those large splashes, like that. We could tap a little bit with our finger to um, create a little more uh, volume within that bush, let's say. So we're creating a little bit of a bush over here. Then we can take our needlepoint brush. We can mix up a little bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, Russian blue, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. We'll get our needlepoint brush loaded up, good. And then we can do some more some more uh, branches and maybe a little bit of twigs and stuff. So we have a little bit of a Like that. So this is the advantage of practicing. So now, once we have this here all set, we're kind of, we've worked some of our um, techniques with our needlepoint brush and our paints and our splashing. So we're kind of expanding out. We started with the splashing, now we're adding a needlepoint brush to do some trees, some tree branches, some tree limbs. So we're incorporating another brush into our technique and now we're creating um, trees, trunks of trees, branches, tree branches, tree limbs. We're using some some grasses in our technique now too. Here, we're spinning around the brush to the right. We're thinking that the wind is mostly going this way in this section of the uh, area. So most times the wind is always going to the right. So most of our, and once in a while there's a couple grasses that f go back the other way once in a while, but most of them are going this way. We have our plants and interesting things here. You can add some flowers to make it more colorful. So if you want to make some colorful flowers in some of the bushes maybe, some oranges. You can just have some fun with it. Get some colors in there, a little more vibrant, exciting colors if you want. Just like that. And then you've, you've created some really fun exercises and some fun compositions and then we can label this. We can say for this, we're going to say this is the uh, needle point brush. So we're going to say needle point brush. And 
and splashing. So we use the needlepoint brush and the splashing technique for this. And then we can just label that like so. Once this dries, we take it, we put it in that folder, and again, then we have another really cool uh, exercise that we've done, and now we have it saved in a folder next to us, in our studio, wherever you work, at your house, at your home, at your apartment. You save these exercises, label them, just like we did here, and then we uh, will have these for future reference. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is just a fun video to kind of uh, show the real uh, interesting importance of doing some exercises, labeling, labeling your exercises, saving them, putting them in a folder, having them so you can refer back to them so that you don't have to really think about uh, when you're in the middle of a painting or if you're going to start a painting and you start looking at things in the painting and you say, oh, I have to, I have to brush up on my uh, splashing technique. You really don't have to brush up too much. You can just go right to your folder and look and say, oh yeah, I remember practicing that a couple times, two, three times. And there's the sheet that I practiced it on. There's the notes. How do I get the different looks? So if we go back to our main sheet here, the first sheet we worked on, splashes. You know if you need fine speckles in your painting, you know that you need 90% paint, 10% water. If you want really big splashes, mostly water and just a little bit of 20% paint. And you can change the colors too as you, as you need. Then uh, maybe you're going to look in the same folder and you're going to say, oh, I remember doing trees with the needlepoint brush. So here, there's the needlepoint brush and we're doing trees. And then here you have it, needlepoint brush and splashing. So you're starting out, you're doing your needlepoint brush work first, and then you're splashing over the top of your trees and doing a little bit of finger tapping on there to get a really nice looking uh, tree, some bushes, some foliage, some grasses, so really, it's just a really fun time here. We're going to have creating some really good compositions that we can put into a folder. And then we'll continue with this. We'll do another video very, very soon. Same idea, but we'll just use something different. We'll, we'll find another technique that we're going to practice up on that we can save in our folder for our future paintings so we can just refer quick and get the quick idea of it and recall back to our previous exercises that we did and it won't be a big deal. We won't be overwhelmed when we're doing our paintings. We'll have a game plan. Okay, so there we go. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're doing videos like this every week and uh, we do everything including exercises. We do boats, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes. We do figure painting, flowers, still life, everything watercolor. So keep coming back. And again, if you're hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell next to it, when you click on subscribe, you'll know exactly when our videos come out each week because you're going to be notified. And then you can just jump right in with us here and start painting and drawing and having a fun time and uh, learning your watercolors. And uh, you'll be making more beautiful paintings every week as time goes on. Okay, so we'll see you on the next video, everybody. Bye-bye.